What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mug. I hope you're doing well. I'm showing off an Ogre Kingdoms project that I did a couple years back, and I'm so proud of it. I really think that it was a turning point in my uh, career as an artist to be able to figure out lots of new techniques to work on these larger scale models. I'm looking to sell these guys, and I hope I can find a good home for them. If you're interested in purchasing them, my email, you can get a hold of me there. Or you can write in the comments, but it's really best to email me because then we can figure out all the payments and everything. You can get at me at warbostestudios at gmail.com. That's warbostestudios at gmail.com if you're interested in these ogors, as they're called now. And the price I want to get out of the way is I'm asking for $1,200. And that is going to include everything you see in front of you, the Ogre Kingdom's Battalion, as well as four special characters, which we'll get to at the end, which I really think is the, um, the icing on the cake and what's really going to make them stand out. Because um, these four ca characters, this project, they've all been featured on my channel. And um, I'm really, really proud of the work that I did. So let's get started and uh, just kind of walk through why I'm asking for so much money. All of the Ogres that you see, are loaded with detail. Um, if you don't remember, or if you didn't see the, the Ogre Kingdoms project, I really wanted to to strip the sprues of all the extra bits. And for those of you who don't know, the Games Workshop Ogre Kingdoms kits had lots of bits on them, extra bits like out the wazoo. So you're gonna see ogres with kegs of ale, extra hand weapons, man traps, bags of bones, and um, all sorts of stuff. And I wanted to make sure that for this project, I included all of that as much as possible. The skin color is a very uh, natural, fleshy tone that was done with the old Games Workshop paints. I spent a lot of time working on the tattoos. You're gonna see tattoos either on their chests or on their shoulders. I think there's some I put on their necks as well, or in the smaller, or center of the back, rather. And um, all of their faces, they've all got eyes. I did work on um, darkening the bags under their eyes to make them look very uh, brutish and mean. And they've all got dark uh, red uh, lower lips to kind of just give the face a little bit of color to pop out. So right here you see the banner bearer and it was one of the first attempts that I ever made at freehand and uh, I think it's, it's pretty good. I'm pretty proud of what I was able to accomplish. There's some shading and some highlighting there. Um, you're gonna see I'm going to be putting on all these models on my little turntable here so I can kind of show them off to you. Like I said, um, they are an Empire or Ogre mercenary force working in the Empire. So you've got these guys wearing the blue and yellow slacks, the blue and yellow colors of, I believe it was Nordland, which was on the coast of the Empire. It was known as a coastal city. Really. I, I think I painted these guys at a time when I was all about the fluff and the character and the background and I wanted all of the models to reflect that. So I really put a lot of effort into um, doing the, the the verdigris effects on their weapons here, on getting um, blood effects. Oh, let's slow down a little bit, sorry about that. And. Um, doing as much detail as possible. I'm going to see if I can find some points. Here on this guy, he's got on his right bicep a little tattoo of an anchor there. And I mean, just small little details like that really made me um, interested in doing as much detail as I could. And uh, I'm not going to get in close on all of their faces, but they've all got very expressive faces that I wanted to do justice to. And so that's, I think, reflected in, in my colors there. So you can see right there in the back, I've got five ogre bulls. I, there were six at home in Hawaii before I moved, though, when I was packing them up. For some reason, I couldn't find the sixth one, and I was really bummed out about that, which is why I wanted to make up for it and kind of bump up the value by adding in the special characters. You add one of the special characters in that missing slot, and um, it's fine. Also, if you're playing them as Age of Sigmar guys, you don't even, you're not even ranking them up, right? So uh, you don't have to worry about them. The square bases are because they, they were from the older edition, but luckily the base shape doesn't matter. And yeah, this guy's wearing the red and white of the Rakeland. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I really think I, I learned a lot about painting bone, skin colors, 
uh, dried blood, which I tried to do for the bulls for their hands there. Um, the tattoo work, learning spacing. Um, there was so much of my skills that were able to progress because of this project that uh, I really am pleased with how they all turned out. <laughs> this little captive Noblar there. These guys really, for those of you who, who have not ever built up an ogre for Warhammer Fantasy, they're ba basically just legs walking forward. All of the legs are kind of the same, walking forward, their um, bodies, and then you pick the head for them and then you choose the arms. All the extra bits you see, like extra weapons, the horn here, a uh, little Noblar snack for later. All of that is um, added detail that I put on because, yeah, you know, like I said, I wanted to, I wanted to grow my talent as a painter, and I never thought I'd sell them. I really thought I'd be able to keep all the models. This was back when I was just a fresh-faced young painter guy making his way in the big wide world, and I thought I'm gonna keep all my models. I'm not gonna sell any of them, but it's come to that point where. Um, all the new releases coming out and um, space being at a premium now in the studio, I really need to get rid of some stuff. So I want to send these guys off to someone who's going to be able to appreciate them and uh, put them on the table. They have never seen battle. That's the thing. These guys, I've never played them. I painted them all the way up. I've never played them. I want them to be on the battlefield. I want them to meet and smash other miniatures and um, in any game system they play. So I, I really hope that I can sell them off. And I think um, 1200 is is pretty fair for the amount of work that I did on them. You're going to see, this is Danny Trejo, o Ogre. Because for some reason, I don't know why his, I, I really thought his face looked like a, looked like an Ogre version of Danny Trejo. Uh, what was I saying? You, I'm going to um, pack them up. I'll pay for shipping as well. And uh, I will send them off to you. I'm going to um, wrap them up, make sure that they are completely safe. And uh, really, I think I think you're going to... Anyone who picks this up is going to be very happy because along with those ogre guys, we've got these fellows... The lead belchers I painted up um, with a lot of soot effects because the rules at the time were that the lead belchers could misfire and blow up and they could hurt themselves with it. So I thought, oh, that's a cool theme. So, And you see some ogre lead belchers with lots of uh, wounds on their faces. They've got shrapnel bedded into their faces. So I thought, why don't I make them look all charred up like they've been working and like they're on their second or third cannon already and uh, the other ones have already blown up, and uh, I think I did a pretty good job with that. I love this little Noblar on the shoulder here, like he's lighting the fuse for his his buddy. I did some effects where this guy's got like an old gold kind of cannon, this guy's got like a dark uh, bronze that's already fading into, uh, and, and got some wear and tear. These guys is like another gold one, and this one's like a silver one. But they're, like I said, they're fantastic models and the sculpts are terrific. I really enjoyed painting them up. And um, yeah, with with ogres not really uh, as a force of destruction for Age of Sigmar, there's not really too much support out for them them yet because uh, Games Workshop is really focusing on the the Stormcast Eternals and and all that stuff. But I think hopefully they'll they'll get a lot of popularity and they'll gain some um, just you know more exposure in the future because they're such great models I mean look at this guy I painted him up with Tamiya clear red and some gloss all over his mouth this fellow because of all the shrapnel on his face and so it kind of glistens in the light when you kind of turn him there you go ooh, look at that it's got shrapnel all over his face so really I I'm so proud of these guys <laughs> I wish I could keep them, but um, I also wish I had money. So that is why I'm selling them off. What is what is this tattoo I did? Oh, this one is, this tattoo is, I believe it is the uh, Templar cross with a white laurel wreath around it. You're going to find things like that on all of my models. If you look at them, you're going to notice, oh, he's wearing the kind of colors of Nuln because Nuln was the imperial, the home of the imperial engineering school where they manufactured cannons. So this guy is either had followed a Nuln expedition and 
took their banner and sewed himself some pants with it, or he um, he kind of learned how to use his gunpowder cannon blunderbuss from them. And yeah, it's just small details like that. Okay, I'm not gonna have... I wish I had more time to show these guys because they are really some of my favorite models. They are the Knoblars, and I'm showing them to you because uh, I'll show these guys. I won't show all of the ranks, but you see this guy here he came with the iron guts, and he looks like an older Knoblar. He's got a large mallet, and he's loaded with weapons. This guy's just loaded down with a pack full of all sorts of stuff, like a turkey leg and a human head. This guy's got like a little knight helmet and a broken chaos sword and a broken chaos shield. This guy's got a little Bretonian helmet there. This guy is my one of my favorites because he's holding a beer bottle. So I painted it brown and I glossed it to kind of look like a Coors Light bottle or a, a Budweiser. I don't think there's any other Noblars that are that interesting. You got this guy here. Um, you've got this dude with the beer keg and yeah, the reason why I'm showing them off is because I don't know if, for those of you who've seen these models before, when they're all ranked up, like Warhammer Fantasy had them, you don't, you miss all of this. You you miss seeing the Noblars that are like kind of piggybacking each other, like a, like cavalry. You miss this little guy loaded down with a keg of black powder and a, a matchstick lit ready for his uh, lead belcher boss. And so I think having them in your collection to play Age of Sigmar with and spread them out as, as, as a skirmish, I guess, style. I think that's great. And so, yeah, we're not going to go through all of the novels. Like I said, you get 20 of them. Oh, is this a... He's got like a pie. I forgot this guy had like a pie in his... that he's holding on his back. It is so cool. Fantastic. All right. So now we get on to the special characters. My favorite part of this project was painting all the special characters and um, you're gonna get these included in your deal so let's walk through them. First you get this ogre pirate. I painted him up to look like the ship's anchor that he's using as a weapon is kind of rusting over because it's been at the bottom of the ocean. He's got a knoblar dressed up as a parrot and making like a very sulky expression on his shoulder because he doesn't like being dressed up like a bird and I think that's hilarious and he's also got a very rusty kind of cutlass sword so there he is he looks just fantastic if I wasn't if I had these special characters separate from the rest of the project I'd charge at least a hundred for each one because I mean seriously if you think about how much the price is for them retail how much Games Workshop charges for them and then the amount of time it took me to paint or build them and then paint them, I think a hundred at least for each one is is very, um, is, is not really not asking too much. So there's him. I've also got this gold digger. <laughs> she take my money. And um, I love how I, it's, it's so stupid, but I love how they included this, this pack because then I was able to paint it up to look like a Louis Vuitton handbag with the little uh, symbols there. She's got a portable little lunch uh, lunch box there, lunch cauldron, so she could cook up uh, anything she finds. And oh, look at that expression. What a lady, my kind of woman. You can throw her easily in with the iron guts because she's got this two-handed weapon, this ro giant rolling pin. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at her in all her glory a little bit more. For those of you who've never seen the female ogre, um, she comes with a beard. Back when they were in metal, you could have glued the beard on her. And I thought that's just ridiculous. So I, I left it off because there should be females in every race. Represent girls. I also um, made her appropriate for the, for the iron guts. You can see that she's in the blue and the yellow of Nordland, and I gave her a Yeti pelt. I painted the pelt like I would paint um, those Yeti figures for the Ogre Kingdoms. I never got to paint any Yetis, but I think that's how I would have painted them. Fantastic model, a lot of fun to paint. Gave her a gold tooth there in the front, and um, I yeah, red hair because she's a, she's a redhead. The Scarlet Johansson of Ogres, that's what she'd look like. Okay, next we've got, oh, my boy, Ninja Steve and his little Donatello Noblar. That's right, I forgot this. This Noblar was the first guy I ever painted for a tutorial. So if you get this, 
if you get this project, you are going to be getting a piece of Warboss Taste Studios history. And I named him Donatello because he's got that quarter staff. I'm so sad they killed him off. And so I gave him that purple um, head wrap mask thing because, you know, props to Donatello and the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> and there's Ninja Steve. I painted his arm as a tattoo sleeve, like a Japanese, uh, I think like Yakuza. And um, I guess now a lot of people have like those, those arm sleeve tattoos. So I looked up a lot of examples and that's my interpretation of it. I gave him blonde hair because I think the um, Caucasian all decked out as a ninja, like the American ninja, Beverly Hills ninja, it's Chris Farley, is, is like a funny concept rather than having him have black hair, which would blend into the wrappings, I think. The idea that he's a foreigner who's just kind of like really um, taken to the culture of the of the ninja has, has uh, really, resonated with me. And I gave him some really cool looking scars on the front. Don't growl, Duke, it's just a ninja. And um, I did that with scab red and some Tamiya clear red. Okay, the last model I wanna show in the project is, yeah, this guy's scary. He is the Ogre Slaughter Master. Let's see if we can get some more light on his face there. And he is a brute. This guy is uh, a model I'm very, very proud of. And uh, I, I really, really like how it all came together. I, again, I glued on all of the pieces in the kit and they are somewhere on the base. Like he had two Noblars. This first one was like this little assistant guy. So I kind of made like he's running away and the slaughter master is sneaking up on him and he's about to club him and throw him in his pot. And you've got this other guy that's all chained up. So I thought, why not throw him on the chains on his back so that no matter where you are on the table, if you're looking at this model, no matter where you are, you are looking at something awesome. You could be behind the model and see the Noblar on the back. You could be in the front and see this little diorama narrative that I've got going on. And uh, you can tell that I was really looking forward to getting all of the blood effects accurate. So I've got a mixture of like his scars on his back. You can see there's some drying blood. I went for bruising on his piercings and I wanted dried blood on his apron there and fresh blood right above the apron on his chest because he just has been feeding. So the blood is spattering down his chest and it's getting soaked up into his apron. His apron hasn't been washed for weeks, which is why the blood looks old and uh, really caked on there. So there's a, lot, there's a lot going on in this model. And I built him up on that cork base also because as a special character, I wanted him to be able to be used as, uh, to have the option of being able to be like the army general, just to give him a little bit of height there. But uh, yeah, this is the final piece I wanted to show. Oh my gosh, we are already at 18 minutes. And um, if you're still watching this video, then you can tell just by the tone of my voice, how much fun I had with this project. It, it really was, um, I think where my skills were tested and where I really learned a lot of new techniques with highlighting, blending, scars, uh, getting this kind of Caucasian skin tone just right. The um, Ogre Kingdoms project will always be one that I am, um, that I, I have so much, so much pride and, you know, positive feelings. I want them to go to a good home, which is why I'm asking for 1200 for them. And if you are interested, then please, like I said in the beginning, you can contact me at warbostastestudios at gmail.com and um, we can work out how I uh, how the payment is going to go and uh, usually through PayPal and I can invoice you for them and I can get them sent out to you. So love your projects, guys. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, very happy that I've, I'm just looking at them all now. I'm so happy I was able to do them and uh, they really were a turning point, like I said, for my channel. And I hope to get them out to a, a happy home as soon as possible. I was actually thinking, you know, once I sell them, I'm going to delete this video because there's no reason for me to be advertising it anymore. But maybe what I'll do is just leave them up because I, I think I'll always want to remember how much fun I had with them. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching, everybody. I got a lot more, uh, a lot more stuff to show you on uh, the channel and I hope you're having a great day, a great week, and we'll see you in the next one.